Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about digital tools that PhD students can use. So anything for productivity, organization, planning, all of those things. But honestly, a lot of these things can be used by anyone, whether you're a normal student or working on any kind of research or projects, or really a lot of them are just pretty general in a sense for organizing your work but some of them will be specifically related to doing a PhD and I'm going to be talking about all of them in the kind of PhD context and why they'd be useful for PhD students specifically. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was requested by one of you and I really hope that it is helpful if you're starting out with a PhD or if you're in the later stages as well. If you have any tips or productivity tools that you like to use that I didn't mention, be sure to comment them down below because it would be helpful for me and I'm sure many of you watching to see some different options. So the first kind of tool that you're gonna need is some sort of reference managing system. So there are a few different options. EndNote is one and that is a paid service, but there are free options as well, such as Mendeley and Zotero. I personally use Mendeley because it has everything that I personally need in order to store all of my papers to get them straight from the internet, wherever I found them, straight into the Mendeley um, platform, which I can then use on any of my devices and I can use it on a web browser as well. So without having to physically store all of the papers on my computer, I can have access to all of the papers that I've found and organize them into tons of different folders. So I have a different folder for each part of my thesis and a subfolder for each topic within that thesis. And I just feel like it's a really handy way to organize everything. As well, in Mendeley, you're able to highlight the papers as you're reading them and you can take notes. So I like to keep some notes when I'm reading different papers. And then sometimes I'll put them all together into like a document when I'm trying to kind of organize all my notes on the one topic and try to see are there some general points I can take out. So I talked about that a bit in my step-by-step -step literature review video. So if you want to see that, I will have that linked for you down below. But I do find that Mendeley is the perfect tool for me, but I do think if you're starting out, you might want to consider some of the other options. It's super, super important. I can, cannot stress enough at the beginning to just get yourself sorted with some sort of reference manager because you'll end up with hundreds and possibly thousands of papers throughout the course of your PhD and you want to have a good way to organize them and be able to actually find everything that you're looking for. Having them in a ton of different folders is just not going to cut it. Perhaps if you're doing a master's, that's fine. For my master's, I didn't use a reference managing system and it was fine. But for a PhD, you really do need to be using some sort of reference managing software. So that's the first thing. The second thing that you're going to need is some form of text editor. So I actually use LaTeX and I use it in Overleaf. And that's like an online version where you can use all of your different papers. The thing about LaTeX is you do have to learn a bit of formatting in a sense. So you need to learn how to actually use the software language. But it's so, so convenient once you get started because if you don't know what conference you're writing for in the beginning, you can just use any template and then change that along the way. So you upload this template into LaTeX and it will automatically format everything for you. So you don't have to worry about any of the formatting like the page numbers or headings. You can just say start section and it will just do that and it'll automatically update all of the section headings for you. So like 3.1, you don't have to do that all by yourself. It will just do all of this automatically. And similarly with your references, you can just say cite whatever keyword you've decided to call the reference and it will just do all of that for you and it will organize your references for you. So you don't have to organize your reference list. So it's just so convenient and you can um, share the documents on Overleaf with other people. So with your supervisors so that they can make edits and stuff like that as well. It definitely does take a little bit of getting used to and I still sometimes use pages when I'm just starting out with something and I just want to kind of write and test things out, but then I'll transfer everything into LaTeX in Overleaf. So that's my preferred choice, but it really does depend. In my field, everyone seems to use LaTeX. Um, so I don't have any issues there, but it might be the case that in your field, it's not really something that's done quite as much. So in that case, you might want to check with your supervisor and see are they comfortable to have your thesis in LaTeX. 
will they be able to work with you on that or would they prefer it in Word? So it is kind of up to them as well because they're the ones who are going to have to read it. But, you know, you can export it as a PDF and if they're going to be making edits that just require comments and stuff like that, then that's probably fine as well. But basically you will need some sort of text editor, whether that's going to be Word or LaTeX or whatever, but you do need something and it's good to kind of decide in the beginning what you're going to be using and keep that consistent. If you're going to be working on papers and your thesis with your supervisor, then you want to kind of have everyone on the same page. The third kind of software tool you're going to need is somewhere to save your work. So you might want to be doing that somewhere like Google Drive or Dropbox. I personally have everything in the cloud because all of my devices are Apple. So that's how I do it because everything then is automatically on all of my devices. So if I want to work on my thesis on my phone, I can. I wouldn't, but I can. So that's what I do. And as well, using Overleaf, then everything's online, but I do always kind of download it every once in a while just to make sure that everything, if something was to happen with Overleaf for some reason, that I would have somewhere to, like, I would never lose that document. So I think that's important to kind of keep that backup somewhere. So that backup is then back up, backed up by the cloud. Having somewhere to save your work is very important because you do hear these horror stories about people who have lost their entire thesis and that's just something that you don't want to happen to you. So making sure you're backing up your work in some way is very important. The fourth thing you'll want to have in terms of software or digital tools is somewhere to take notes. And I kind of have a few different things because I take short form notes and long form notes. So for short form notes, I'm talking about somewhere to quickly jot down ideas if I'm in a meeting with my supervisor or if I have an idea that I want to explore later on, but I'm working on something right now, I want somewhere to just quickly jot down those ideas. Um, and it depends if I want that to be somewhere to come back to, in which case I'll use like the notes app or um, sometimes I'll use Google Keep for things like that. But generally it's probably my notes app. And if I want something in a more urgent way, like something I want to use right now, then I'll use the stickies on my computer. So that's something available on Macs, but I'm sure there are Windows versions, any kind of notes app that you can just have with a little way to keep it on your home screen so that if you need to use it now, you can do so. So that's where I like to sort of quickly jot down some notes if I need to, if I'm in a meeting or if I just have a, a spur of the moment idea, but I don't want to like break from my current work, but I want to come back to it. So that's something I find really useful. And then in terms of long form notes, so when you're reading papers, you want to be able to take notes somewhere. You might want to do that physically or you might want to type them up. So I actually generally keep my notes in Mendeley. So in the paper, you can go in, you see the notes, but you might want to keep them somewhere else. So there are tons of different options for that. You could use Evernote or you could use a pages document or a Word document, or you could use a spreadsheet. So when you're working on the literature review, that's something to consider. You might want to keep some notes for each paper in a different part of your big spreadsheet so that you have everything in the one place and you can easily look at all of that. So somewhere to take notes is important. You will need to take notes for a variety of reasons. So for me, it's having short form note taking in the form of a notes app or my sticky notes, and then a long form notes in could be even in a pages document or I don't personally use Evernote, but lots of people I know do. And then also just taking notes in Mandalay as well. So those are the options for that, but there are a ton of different note-taking services. It's just good to have, a, have in mind a few that you really like and that really work for you, that you find you can actually revisit those notes and use them. That's what's important. So finding a note-taking application of some sort is important. So the next kind of things are more on the scheduling side of things. So you need some form of calendar app to plan out your days as well as longer periods. So what I like to do for daily planning is to use Google Calendar because that you can have on your laptop or on your phone. And I really like the way it's laid out aesthetically. I really enjoy it. So this is really good if you want to time block your days, which is really good to stay on top of everything. I think time blocking is one of the most handy ways to stay productive and just kind of keep on track. 
So that's something that I use a lot. So I do kind of block out the day and then I leave a couple shorter unplanned parts of the day just in case something goes wrong and I get sidetracked with some random tasks. Then I have a bit of space in the day so I don't feel like I haven't achieved everything I need to do. And as well, what I like about it is I try to color code the day into different things. And then if I'm looking at the day, I should see a variety of colors so that I know that I've hit different aspects of my day. So work, exercise, food, family, friends, self-care, all of those things I like to color coordinate. And then I can see, make sure that I'm having a nice balanced day. And then it's not just work, 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 work. So I don't really have a running to-do list in my Google Calendar. It's just those are the tasks I've planned out for that day. But if I do need a running list, I will have that in my Google Keep or in the Notes app. Google Keep is good for like specifically notes because you can check different boxes and stuff like that. And then notes, if you just need a to-do list, I personally would do that and then just delete whatever I've done. So either or, but I do think it's good to organize what you need to do in the short term in some kind of to-do list app. There are also things like Wonderlist and Todoist, but these are the ones that I find are quite simple and easy to use and I already had them, so I might as well use them. And then in terms of trying to plan out things more in the future, you can do that as well, obviously with the calendar app, just putting events into the later parts of the year, but it's also nice to be able to plan out your days in the same app. And then the last thing, the last kind of set of tools you'll need is some sort of project management tools. So doing a PhD is like doing a big four year project. So having some way to track your progress and plan out different times of the year, what's good to do and stuff like that is extremely important. Next week, I'm going to be doing a video about planning out your four years. So that's going to be done using a Gantt chart and it's going to be on pen and paper because you all know that's how I typically plan out things. I don't really do the digital stuff quite as much, but I like to have a balance. And I think planning out and having a physical copy of a plan is nice, but then it's also good to be able to access it on any of your devices if you need to. So if you want to see that video, be sure you are subscribed and that you have all notifications on so that you know when that video is up. But that will be my next sort of Sunday planning video. We'll be planning out your four years, which is a bit horrifying but it can be good to know what you need to be doing when and how to stay on track. So using a Gantt chart is the simplest way to do that. And I have yet to find a good Gantt chart app that's free and also is aesthetically pleasing. So Asana is my personal choice, but in order to do the timelines, you have to pay for the premium membership. Although I do really like how it looks and everything is adjustable, which I really like. However, I don't really want to pay for this just now. I don't really feel like I need it because I personally do really well on physical planning and that's just something I prefer doing. So that's, I think, a good way to do it if you want like a visual representation of your long term, what you need to do. So for planning multiple projects, a Gantt chart is perfect and having like the different aspects. So knowing you're doing your literature review now, now you're working on a paper and like having the overlaps and stuff like that so you can see how everything is looking. That's really good. But then as well, you might want to have more of a place to plan specific projects. So for that, I like Trello or Kanban. Both are pretty good options, um, but it means you can create a board and then within those boards. So like I have my literature review board and within that I have different tasks. And then within that, I have a list of all the things to do. So for each, for the literature review board, I then have um, all of the different sections of my literature review. And then within those sections, I have a to-do list kind of style where it's doing the keywords, which if you've seen my recent video on developing the keywords for your literature review, then you will know what I mean by that. Then it's doing the search, which will be my upcoming literature review video. And then it is, doing the reading for that topic, then it is putting together the paragraph for that topic, and then it is editing. So those are the kind of steps I have there, but I can do that for each section of the literature review. So that's something I find really convenient, but ideally I would have also a Gantt chart to map out time-wise in general when these projects are happening. 
Recently, I'm yet to find sort of an app that I really like for productivity. So let me know in the comments below if you have any good sort of productivity tools and I would love to hear those. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up because that really helps my channel out and I will see you guys in the next video.